during 2023 config, Figma finally launched design tokens. Variables. So they did launch tokens, but they're not calling them tokens. They're calling them variables because, you know, business reasons. So we're going to have a look at how to use variables specifically for prototyping. We're going to have a different video later on talking about variables for styles and all of that. But let's look at prototyping first because this solves so many problems with prototyping. Let's dive in. So we've got this little screen here and we're gonna go step by step about how to use the different variables and how to set them up, but it's gonna be very basic. So don't worry about it. It's not gonna be complex at all. We have this little kind of shoe page over here. And let's say I want the user to be able to add the shoes to the cart. So if I just use this, it will be something really clunky, right? I'm gonna have to set up, you know, a screen that has two left in stock, one left in stock, zero left in stock. And if it's zero, it goes to the out of stock. And if it's in stock, it goes to the tick and all of that. But with variables, we can do this all in one. First thing we need to do is to set up a number variable, okay? And that number variable is gonna be connected to the stock. So then we can check how much stock is left. Let's do that. I'm gonna go to local variable over here and just add a new one. First of all, I wanna be in a named collection, so I'm gonna rename it to Sunshine Shoes. Then I'm gonna add my first variable. My variable is gonna be a number and I'm gonna call it stock. And let's say I have two of these left in stock, so I'm gonna say two. Now I need to connect this variable to some text box in my page. So I'm gonna go over here and you can see that the way it's set up, if you look in the layers panel, the two and the left in stock are separate, okay? Because if I connect it to both of them, the left in stock will just disappear. So I need those two kind of to be separate. The number is in one and the text is in the other. I'm gonna click on this two and then we have this new button over here. This is the variable button. You'll see it floating around in your design file a lot. It's gonna be next to text. I'll click on it and I'll apply the stock variable. It's gonna stay two, but if I click outside, go into local variables and just edit this. And instead of two, let's say I say 10, you'll see that update on the page. Think of it like a style for text. Maybe that helps, maybe it makes it more confusing. Huh? So I'm gonna change it back to two because that's how much I have. Up till now, really simple, right? It's like a way of controlling the text from outside. Now, the way I wanna use this is that every time the user clicks on add to cart, I want this number to go down because now we have one less left in stock. Let's do that. I'm gonna click on my button, go into prototype and add an interaction. I'm gonna move this closer to here. So my interaction is going to be on click, set variable. So I'm gonna set the variable stock. It's gonna give me a list of all my variables. So now I need to say, what am I setting it to, right? So I'm gonna say stock is now set to something else. Now I could say one, but that will be kind of a one-time thing, right? What I want it to do is subtract one from the current number. So I'm gonna say stock, and then you see it gives me those kind of mathematical functions to help me out, minus one. So what we're saying is every time someone clicks on add to cart, it changes the variable stock to stock minus one. Let's see this in action. And also let's see this cool new prototyping. So now we don't have to play it in a separate tab. We can just kind of preview it. There is of course a shortcut for this, but how you get it working just without the shortcut is if you go over here and next to the play, you've got present or preview or on the flow. I think it kind of defaults on the flow to the preview, but it can also shift and space that will open it over here. Now let's have a look at the two. When I click on add to cart, that goes down, goes down again, goes down again, goes down again, goes down again. We will fix that now. So at this time, we wanna set a conditional, right? Because we don't want it to go down to minus. So what we're gonna do is plus, because now we can add multiple things on top of one interaction. I'm gonna set a conditional. If you're not familiar with conditionals, conditionals are basically an if, else statement. So if this is happening, do this, else do this. Okay. So I'm going to click on conditional and then I'm going to say, if stock is greater than zero, then we needed to do what we did before. So I could rewrite all of this again inside of here, or I could just close it and then hover over it and kind of drag it into here. So now we're telling it if the stock is greater than zero, then subtract one. If it's not, just leave it as nothing for now. We don't have to put anything in that else statement. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that in a second, but for now, let's just do nothing. Click on this, shift and space. Let's have a look. When I click add to cart, subtract it to one, 
subtracted to zero, I'm clicking again, nothing is happening. Fabulous. Now let's make it a bit more interesting. Now I'm going to add some more feedback for the user. So let's say if the stock is greater than zero, I'm going to subtract, but I'm also going to do one more thing. So you see, I can add another interaction onto here. I'm going to say open overlay. I'm going to open this tick animation, maybe make it dissolve. Now, because when it is zero, it's actually nothing's happening and the user doesn't understand maybe why. So I'm going to add an action. So when it's not greater than zero, I want to open an overlay out of stock. Great. Let's have a look at that. Clicking on my frame and shift space. So we've got two add to cart. Lovely. So you see that is happening at the same time. It's subtracting and opening the overlay. Click out now. Oh, it's out of stock. So it's opening the out of stock and it's not subtracting. Now that we've done that, we've looked at the numbers and we looked at conditionals. Now I want us to look at the Boolean variable. You might remember Booleans from component properties as well, but Boolean is a yes, no state. Okay. It's something that has a true and a false and nothing else. And that could be applied, for example, to a layer. Let's have a look. Now I want to create one more bit of feedback for our user. I want to create a little notification on the cart that changes number and appears when there is something inside of the cart because that's what a user is expecting, right? So I'm going to click on my cart over here. I've prepared this notification over here and right now it obviously says zero. So let's set this up. First of all, I want to connect this zero inside of the cart, that number to a number variable. So we know how to set that up, don't we? We click outside, so we're clicking on nothing. We add another variable. By the way, if you click here, you're adding another mode, not another variable. So don't click on that, just click on create variable. So we're creating a number and we're going to call it cart. It's at zero because at the start, there's nothing in the cart. Then we're going to click on our number over here. I'm holding down command to get that deep selection and variable button, apply cart. So that is connected to that. Perfect. Now we need a Boolean variable to tell this notification if it's on or off. So I'm going to create a variable, a Boolean one, and I'm going to call it cart notification. And I'm going to set it to false because at the start, it's not on, right? As a, as a default, it's zero. So I don't need to see this notification. Now let's connect it. So I'm going to click on my cart notification. Now I won't see the variable button like I did before. In order to find it, I need to go to layer and right click next to the eye. Okay, this is a bit of a weird one, but I need to right click on the eye and then click on cart notification. Because the default is set to false, then it will be turned off immediately. Perfect. Now let's set it up inside of my prototyping. It's going to go inside of the conditional, right? I'm going to say that if this happens, right, if this was successful, it means that I've reduced the stock and I've added an item to the cart. So in that case, if I'm doing that, I need to set the cart notification to true. First of all, so I need that notification to turn on. And then I also need to, so I'm adding another one, set the cart variable to, just like before, cart plus one. Yeah. And you can see when it kind of popped up, I could set it to cart plus stock, for example. It's not what I want, but I can connect multiple variables together. So everything is just referencing something rather than being just numbers. Okay. Let's see if this worked. I'm going to click on my frame, shift and space. So add to cart, one, left in stock. The tick happened and look at this, the notification appeared on the cart and it says one, okay? Let's close this, add another one, two, okay? It's actually working. It's as if it's a real app. Now let's see what happens when I try and add another one. Nothing happens to the notification because remember, we set up the conditional so all of this only happen if stock is greater than zero. If it's not, the only thing that happens is we get that lovely overlay. We don't get anything else. So that was a basic overview of variables and how you can use them for prototyping. There is so, so, so much more you can do with this and I really encourage you to start exploring. Let me know what your favorite thing out of config was, how you think you're gonna use this to kind of make your life easier as a designer. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Let me know if you're enjoying it. See you at the next one.